I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. All right, Foxy listeners. So usually when I have somebody on the show, we chat for five, 10 minutes, and then we get right to the interview. But my guest today, we have literally been talking for 58 minutes before we even started recording because we had so much in common and so much stuff to talk about. So I can't wait to even get on the topic. Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This is my pleasure, Tanya. Thank you so much for inviting me. So I feel like we've known each other for quite a while, but let's give the listeners a little bit of background on how you became Mr. Marketing. Well, I'm going to give them a super short version, Tanya. I originally started out in a niche area of real estate financing known as uh, discounted notes. Uh, The slang is to call it paper, but it's when an owner of a commercial property, some land or residential property, uh, agrees to take financing, either is a first deed, a first mortgage, or a second deed of trust, or a second mortgage to help facilitate the sale. And I learned from some of the, the guru and guruettes out there how to find these and uh, present them to institutional lenders who would buy them, pay all the closing costs. And in essence, what you and I do is get the spread. In other words, they give you a price and then you'd come back with your own price. And if they accepted it, you made that difference. So a buddy of mine, that industry was kind of dinosaurish in terms of marketing. And once I learned about direct response marketing from some of the legends like Jay Abraham, the late copywriting genius, Gary Halbert, and uh, Dan Kennedy, and some of these other people, I started writing articles in some of the big time newsletters that were out at the time. Right. And this was all new. This was like people discovering uh, butter on toast. For the first time. <laughs> like, what is this guy talking about? So I started getting invited to the biggest conventions out there. And the short of it is a buddy of mine, Bill, he said, man, listen, I know you think this paper thing is all that. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry, true enough. He said, but Mark, these small business owners and service providers, this marketing stuff you teach, like power headlines, what's in it for me type of, you should be teaching this kind of stuff to small business owners, uh, bounce back offers and all that stuff. And as I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? You're right. You go into these little stores and they're just chugging along, not realizing there's so many things they could do or four or five or six uh, uh, evergreen strategies and tactics telling you they could be using that could, I like to say, you go from working extremely smart and hard in your business to working extremely hard, I'm sorry, smart and hard on your business to service. Mm-hmm. And that's a big distinction, as you well know. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about, let's dive into mm-hmm. to some of this because okay. you have what is called a magic question. So oh, yes. talk to us about what that is and how can people use that? I, you know what? I would have started blabbing and completely forgot. Thank you for keeping me on point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to do a live demonstration right here and now. We're going to find out if this Mr. Marketing guy has the goods or not. <laughs> I promise you, Tanya and I did not pre uh, plan this before. So I'm going to try the magic question out on her. We're going to see what her actual live reaction is. And then you'll know if this will work for you. Tanya, I want to ask you a basic question. Okay. Is it okay if I periodically refer you new customers in business? Yes, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? Now, by the same token, as long as it doesn't take away from anything you're currently doing or will have going in the future, are you okay with periodically returning the favor? Like sending you referrals as well? Yeah, absolutely. Abs- yeah, I'd be willing to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me try. You heard her words, but let me translate <laughs> this because I don't really think you see what's going on here. 
here's what she's saying. Mark, not only you, do you get access to my current contacts, resources, assets, but the ones I'm going to have tomorrow, next week, and next year, which are 10x better, you get access to those too. Ladies and gentlemen, the magic question, if you're not asking that of your current and future vendors that you have rapport with, not walking across the street to some business you haven't ever patronized and trying to do this with, this opens the door to what I'd like to call previously untapped marketing opportunities and or possibilities. In fact, speaking of possibilities, Tanya can tell you some of the stuff we talked about before we came on, on this show powerful stuff. So the point being, you start asking the magic question at least once a week. You got 52 weeks in a year. You may not get everybody, but you'll get enough that it'll open the door to some untapped opportunities. Tanya, if I could take this a step further, I really mm -hmm. think we can show them how powerful this could be. I'm going to use her and I as an example. Let's suppose I have a gourmet coffee shop and I don't even realize that Tanya is a podcaster, but she comes into the shop all the time. Here's what I'm going to do. Now that I've, I've gotten onto this marketing stuff. So here's what I'm going to do now. Every time I say Tanya comes in once a week and she buys what I call the big gold. That's this big plastic cup. And uh, it's- I love a, that you think I'd only be going into a coffee shop once a week, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> tells you how little I know about her, right? But here's the point. She comes in once a week and she gets a big, let's say she comes in three times a week, but she gets the big gold once a week. So this thing is a plastic cup. It's, the, it's a you know big, large cup. And let's say the big gulp is $6.79. Here's what I'm going to do. From now on, I say, Tanya, every time you bring that cup back, you don't pay $6.79 anymore. You pay $1.79 or $1.99. She's like, what? Now she goes from once a week to three times a week just getting the big gulp. Multiply that by 52. And when you realize she's got birthdays, graduations, college graduations, retirements, uh, people open a second location, wedding anniversaries, uh, opening a new business, uh, grandparents, first grandchild, second grandchild, on and on and on and on. And you grandfather her in lifetime discount 25%. You think she's not going to be bragging when she goes back to her circle of influence, I, like what I like to call her tribe? You better believe she is. Now, once I find out she's a podcaster, I said, tell you, anytime you want, you come in, I'll reserve a spot for you. You can do your show right here live and invite your tribe to come in, buy a big gulp. I'll give them the plastic cup. And from now, when they come back, they bring the cup. They only play one, $1.99. Some of those people own a business. You get the employees. You let them give away the big gulp cups to their VIP customers. You give it away to your vendors. This is how, well, I don't want to sound like telling you your neighborhood MLM, but this is how you put your marketing on steroids for literally pennies on the dollar. Right, because obviously I, well, I think two things happen. One, as a customer, I come back more. Because I'm going to, I have, the loyalty is there because now Absolutely. you're giving me a discount. Right. Plus you're right. I am talking about it, but I'm also walking around more times with my mug, which I'm exactly. hoping their logo is on that. <laughs> well, it, whether it is or not, but you're absolutely right. You want to yeah. take it to the next step, be super professional, you should have your logo. But even without it, when she puts that cup down on the desk, I like, what is that? And she tells the story. Mm -hmm. They said, well, I can't even, yeah, you go in the first time you pay retail. So that way they can pay for the cups and the, you know, the, the, the inventory. But every time you come back after that, it's 179. And then you tell them, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll give you this laminated card or if you have an app. And on your birthday, not ladies, not the year, just the month and the day you were born, that cup is free. Yeah. Now that's going to spread word of mouth and mouse, as I, I like to say. Yeah. So, how would we convert then? So that's great when you, obviously you would notice that this customer is coming to you a lot. How are some ways that people can convert sort of a one-time customer and transfer them into a repeat customer? Because that's almost sort of the opposite of the, 
of the spectrum of what we're talking about. Well, that's exactly, I'm going to say, you, you, well, you're sealing my thunder here, Tony. <laughs> that's exactly the mindset, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to adapt. You look around, you say, what is it we could commoditize that instead of trying to sell it once, we could turn it into a repeat sale. Now, like she said, you give away a little discount. In fact, Tanya, let me, let me share this with you too, ladies and gentlemen. You got to stop doing this. You small business owners and retail stores, stop treating your business or service like a one night stand. What are you saying, Mark? You jump from retail customer, first time customer, retail, first time customer, retail, first time. You say, okay, well, that's how you run a business. Yeah, if you want to try to push a car uphill with a rope, and most people, when I get that analogy, I say, what do you mean push a car uphill with a rope? It's making it make sense. <laughs> exactly. It does not make sense for you to try to run a business like that. Once you establish a relationship, Ladies and gentlemen, you got to drill down. You got to get that customer or client to come back more often, to spend more money, and to spread the word. That's how you get roots in your business. So, to answer your question directly, you look, if I were doing an inventory for your business or service, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to look around at what you do, and I'm looking for something that A, has a high perceived value and a fairly low cost, and say, you know what? Instead of trying to make that 60% on that one set, let's drop down your gross profit margin and just make this a repeat item that they, like for instance, if you got a retail store, start a coffee club and don't charge retail. In fact, here's the strategy. Go find the best gourmet coffee in your area. And instead of trying to charge $6.79 or $7.79 or everybody else, charge $1.79, $2.29. Because now, like she said, what you're doing is you're not trying to get one sale. You want them coming in two to three times a week, over 52 uh, weeks. And rest assured, they're not just going to come for, I was going to say cheap, Tony, but inexpensive cup of gourmet coffee. Yeah. They're gonna, in fact, Tanya made a, a comment when we were offline. She said, Mark, one of my best podcast episode so far is blown up what was the number like four hundred thousand or something like that views yeah. Yeah. he said but what that has led to is they go back and they yeah. listen to other episodes when they're in your store for the inexpensive cup of coffee like why do you think walmart will sell a can of Campbell's soup for 99 cents and everybody else sell it for 229 walmart knows all i gotta do is get you in this store yeah 99.9 .9 of you are not going to leave with just that campbell soup that's the strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, before you say that won't work for me, I got a challenge for you. You let me institute this in your business. You pay the cost. I keep all the profit. Tell you, I haven't had one taker yet. The people say that won't work, but they're not willing to put their money where it might be. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So test, and that's the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. You got to inexpensively A-B split test. What the heck does that mean, Mark? It means you give them a choice. You want this, you want that. And you let the market tell you. You don't say this is what you want. Right. That's not marketing. That's sales. You're trying to sell. See, notice when these companies sell on, 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 on primetime radio, television, pay-per-click, they're not asking you. They're trying to tell you what you want. No. You let your market tell you. And then you're just smart enough to give them what they tell you they want. How do you know what they want? The ratings. If it's television, right? Then you say, well, the ratings were explosive. Or the news. Every time we put a crash or a scandal with a politician, ratings explode. O.J. Simpson. He dominated the headlines. Why? People wanted to know about it. Now, you could be not smart and say, well, no, they don't want to know about that. They want to know about this, and you're going to get crushed. Well, that's why you test. And here's the other thing, Tanya, before I forget, because I realize you know, on these changes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to warn you. I know Tanya's warned you. You should be rocking social media. I hope you are. I'm rocking social media. Tanya, are you rocking social media? I'd like to think I am. I'm right. We're all I'm on social media. <laughs> but here's, here's the point. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're only rocking social media, your Titanic is headed toward an iceberg. Because one day you may wake up and guess what? Your 275,000 Instagram followers are gone. Your 300,000 Twitter followers, gone. Your Facebook PPC account, gone. 
Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Reed Hoffman of LinkedIn, they're the landlords. You and I are the tenants. They can pull the plug anytime they want. You say, well, what's the alternative, Mark? You got to build your own opt-in email list. Now you got control. In fact, I have my own podcast. We'll get to that, ladies and gentlemen. The reason I do is because Tanya might take this episode, replay it back and say, you know, I don't really think this is a good fit for my audience. Where does that leave me? On the other hand, once a week, I put my own podcast out. So if I never get on another show, I got my own podcast. I have my own blog. And you need your own opt-in email list. I'd like to say it like this, Tanya. If you're just doing social media, you're sleeping on your mother-in-law's couch. <laughs> at some point, she may say, listen, I like you, but you got to go. Right. You'd be homeless. You say, well, Mark, how do I build my own list? Oh, that was going to be my question. So give us some oh, examples. Because I, okay. I think some people get stuck on that, right? They're like, they do. I've That's heard that question. term. I've heard opt-ins and all of that other stuff and lead magnets and all of those things. <laughs> right. right? But then they're about? like... Right. Okay, so I put something out there and it's crickets, you know, or my mom been, is, you know, like we said, my mom is the one that replies to it. Wants to right, no, exactly. we, that's part of marketing, ladies and gentlemen. She's being deadly honest. That's part. Sometimes you're going to get crickets. That's why you test. But let me let me give you a simple example. We're going to say that I am a retail jewelry store. Okay. And two doors down is Tanya's. What was the name of your retail store, Tanya? Uh, Crafty Crafters. Two doors down is Crafty Crafters. One day, I put out a sign in front, you know, uh, a 50% off uh, liquidation sale, and Tanya decides to walk in. As soon as she walks in the store, you know what she sees? A big, giant, four-way sign, music legend Stevie Wonder couldn't miss. It says, free drawing, exclamation point. Oh, what do we have here? It's got a beautiful picture of a five thousand dollar you use your own figures now, ladies and gentlemen don't get caught up on the figures get the concept a five thousand dollar uh diamond studded necklace and tanya looks at that picture and says oh boy that's gonna look so good on my neck and she goes over and she fills out the card or if there's a lead capture page address if you guys don't know what a lead capture page is it only has two options you put your name your best email address in or you don't there's no navigational bar. There's enough. Only thing you can do is put your name. If you want what we call the bait, the lead magnet, you put your name and your best email address in. Now, here's the point. Tanya puts her, in this case, if it's a postcard, because if you don't have email yet, you could use snail mail postcards, but this is more expensive. You got to pay typesetting. You got to pay postage every time you mail this stuff out. You do email, you get couple options. If you're using a paid email service provider, a reputable one, ladies and gentlemen, can't do this with the free service, but you could test subject lines just like you can headlines. In other words, let's say you got a thousand people on the list, you put some subject line in there and you send it out. Out of the thousand, let's say 400 people open it, 600 don't. Well, you could turn around with your paid email service provider, send an email just to the 600 or X percent who didn't open that first one, change the subject line to something sexy, a what's in it for me. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever forget this. Your prime target audience, your tribe, they wear a big neon sign that says, what's in it for me? It's our job as marketers to ambitiously attack that sign with benefits. That's what they want. You give them the benefit. So I digress. But anyway, when it's time to enter my free drawing. Now, if she enters it, you best believe, I say 70 to 90% of the women that come in that store are going to enter. Oh, and by the way, gentlemen, you want a $5,000 men's Rolex. Now, first of all, understand something. In retail jewelry, we don't pay what we sell it for. Our cost is typically going to be half or less. So that $5,000 necklace might have cost $2,500. That $5,000 Rolex might have cost uh, $2,500. Uh, $2, but here's the point. Let's say Tanya wins. We're going to send her an exclusive email. Dear Tanya, congratulations, exclamation point. You know she's going to click that email open, yeah. right? She won. <clears throat> what if we had 3,500 women in the month enter that drawing? What do we do with the other 99? Blow them off? No. We send, we date them. 
We send them follow-up emails and we nurture the relationship. And that's the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know, Tanya, have you ever heard this analogy? Seth Godin is the first, I don't know if he invented it, but he's the first guy I ever heard say it, so I'm giving him credit. Seth Godin said, when people come to your website for the first time, that's like a first date. Can you imagine uh, proposing marriage on a first date? How ridiculous is that? You don't even know each other yet. Right. You date. You say, well, how do you date, Mark? That's your se sequential follow-up email messages or your follow-up snail mail messages. Let them get to know you. So the, what we're going to do with the other 99, we're going to say, uh, here's a, a, a subject line, or, I mean, I'm sorry, a headline I stole from uh, the late, great copy writing legend, Gary Har Howard. It says, congratulations, exclamation point. But you click on it, it says, Dear value subscriber, in this case, we say, Dear Ted, unfortunately, you didn't win this month's grand prize. That went to Mary Jones. You know, uh, but you have won an extremely valuable, time sensitive second prize worth X. Now, ladies and gentlemen, learn a powerful marketing strategy right here. Here's what 99% of your competitors are doing my retail uh, 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 jeweler competitors. They're going to tell Tanya to come to the store before the state. If she comes to the store before the state, she saves X percent off. You say, okay, that sounds normal, Mark. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I say, Tanya, for whatever reasons, if you decide to come along, you save 10% off up to $200. Not very sexy. It's not supposed to be. However, simply for dragging a friend who's at least 18, before that date, you save 40% off or X up to $1,500 or X. And as long as your friend joins our list before they leave the store that day, they save 30% off up to $1,000. Those are not quite as good. Now, we call this the McDonald's strategy, Tanya. You know why? When you and I go into Burger King, Wendy's, but McDonald's started it. You go into McDonald's, say, I'll have the uh, quarter pounder and strawberry shake. And these 17, 18 year old young people who have never run a business in their life automatically are told to come back and say, You want fries, you with, like that? fries with that? <laughs> fries or apple pie, something. <clears throat> Boom. Yeah. You know what happens, ladies and gentlemen? 10 to 40% of McDonald's and Burger King's and Wendy's worldwide traffic now says yes. But get this, Chad. McDonald's wasn't satisfied with that. They got their best marketing guru and guru ets in the room and said, how do we take this to the next level? They got two words for you. When you and I say yes to would you like fries with that, they say, super slash you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another 10 to 40% say yes, but get this. We pay retail for those french fries. McDonald's didn't go back on television 14, 15, 16, 20 something times with the advertisement at prime time that cost a ton of money. No, they got you and I to spend a little bit more while we're at the table. In fact, I like to say it this way, Tanya. Think of yourself walking downhill, a steep hill. If I come up behind you, I have to shove you, just give you a nudge. You're going to move forward. That's exactly when you need to strike with your customers. When they are H-O-T, when they are in the fervor of buying, have you noticed whenever you go to Amazon, you buy something, they say, oh, by the way, you like that, you might like this. Right, yeah. They know that's the time. You don't wait till they get home and then the, 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 the doubt gremlin says, oh, I shouldn't have bought this. Well, I like, think, no, you get them at that moment. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you a simple, very simple strategy. If you're not doing this, I promise you, you're like a waiter or waitress who's leaving the tip on the table. If you have a mail order division of your company where people order something by mail and you send it out, you should have a extremely time sensitive bounce back offer in that mailing where you're offering them something else at a discount. Now, for those of you who think linear, in other words, you hear 10 and I say 8 plus 2, you don't see 7 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 5 plus 5, 9 plus 1, or 12 minus two. Your top cross promotional or joint venture partners or strategic alliance partners or tell you what's another term? I don't know. Whatever you <laughs> yeah. co collaboration partners. Yeah. Collaborators. 
they may have a meal division, but they're only selling the one product or the service. Stick your extremely time sensitive offer in there. Give, you know, ethically bribe your partner to do it. In other words, give them 20 to 50% after cost. You're going to keep what we call all the back end. What do you mean back end, Mark? The repeat sales, the goodwill, the testimonials. So it's more than work. Those two strategies alone are going to take your business profitability to the next level. And here's why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, because here's what some of you have experienced. You've increased sales. You've increased revenue. But you haven't increased profits. Why is that? Because your expenses are still the same. You're doing 80, 20, or 90, 20, meaning 80 to 90% of your cost is cost. And the other 10% is profit. See, when you do the referral thing we're talking about here, Tanya and I are trying to share with you, now you got 10 to 15, 20% cost, 80% gross profit. That's how you buy better technology. That's how you move into a better building. That's how you get better marketing. That's how you get better everything. But see, most small business and service providers never get to that point because you're constantly chasing that first time customer, that first time uh, uh, client. And you say, well, yeah, but a client is repeat sales too, Mark. If you get to the point that your clients are coming to you on the regular, yes. But if you don't, you're gonna stay in struggles, Bill. I promise you, you will. What we're trying to take, show you how to do is for, in fact, Tanya, here's a famous joke. And maybe it was because it was two men. Two guys are driving across the desert. One guy looks out and he says, man, look at all that cactus. What did the other guy see, ladies and gentlemen? Sand. Las Vegas. Oh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. Right? Same thing. In other yeah. Words, they both looked at the same thing. They both drew two different conclusions. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize if Tanya and I right now were sitting in her favorite, her, her favorite gourmet coffee shop and we're talking, she says, you know, Mark, I really like some of these, you know, non-traditional lead generation strategies and conversion strategies. Guy, why don't you come on my podcast and share this with my audience? Ladies and gentlemen, I just went from, or you just went from one to one to one to many. It's called leverage. You understand? <laughs> leverage. That's what Archimedes was talking about when he said, hey, you give me a fulcrum and a lever big enough, I can move the world. Leverage. You do one thing and you get a much broader result. That's how you grow your business, in my opinion, or service exponentially. And for you service providers, Tenny, let me just share this with your service providers. Because, you know, we all talk to retail, retail, retail. retail yeah. service, <clears throat> poor service. service providers are sitting there feeling like the orphan yeah. child. Well, I don't have you a mean? product what? to sell. Exactly. Yeah. Let's say you're an up and coming real estate agent, you're licensed. Or you're the broker, you know, you, in other words, you're, you're competing, competing with the big time uh, 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 agencies in your area. Follow this. Tell you, do they have up there in Canada those, what we, in, in, in the United States, we call them adult education centers? Yeah. You know, we can take a local class. And yep. I know with the COVID, it kind of died off and it went virtual. But now it's kind of coming back, right? You know, yep. people going back physically. But it doesn't matter whether you do this virtual or, or live. Follow this. A licensed real estate agent is going to teach a class. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before I share the, you know, the, the magic trick, I pull the curtain back, I want you to think about the psychology of what's going on here. Tanya, let's say it's Tanya is a licensed real estate broker. She's going to start teaching a class in an adult education center. Now, get the name of this class. How to sell your home for top dollar without a licensed real estate broker, exclamation point. What? She only gets paid when she sell something. She works on commission. Why the heck is she doing this class? Because statistically, here's what Tanya knows. Within six to eight weeks, 98% of you are going to throw in the towel and say, H with it. Uh, I need a lot. Tanya, she taught you the paperwork, how to advertise the property. She's got some uh, extremely time sensitive gift certificates that she give you to a, a local law firm that she uses and good for 90 days, six months, whatever the case may be. She put the whole package together for you. And now you need a broker. Who are you going to turn to? There you go. And they will tell friends who will tell family, who will tell coworkers, who will tell in-laws, who will tell neighbors, who will take, uh, tell uh, ex-coworkers, who will tell future coworkers, who will tell ex-neighbors, who will tell future neighbors. 
that's how she grew her business into this uh seven plus figure business and now she travels all over the world teaching small real estate agencies how to do exactly what she does because she don't want to cannibalize herself with canna so she and she does when i say travel around she does virtual what we're doing right now zoom and they pay her a subscription fee of 97 dollars a month and she comes on and say let me look at your ad mark oh, okay i think i see what the problem is mark you have what we call an institutional myself sandwich ad what do you mean you keep using i we me in your advertising but uh, yeah, Mark, I, we, me repels, you and yours attracts. You got to go back and rewrite it. And wherever you got an I, we, me, you turn it to a you or a your. That, that's like, ladies and gentlemen, putting the cookies on the stairs and telling a little kid, Johnny or Mary, you go upstairs and do what mommy and daddy tells you to do. And you keep getting more rewards. That's how you ethically bribe your audience. See, you and I think all these designations, and the numbers of years you're in school, that's what impresses people. It doesn't. If somebody has a toothache, they don't care what school the dentist graduated from. They want to know, can you get rid of this pain? Then that's what you need to tell them in your main, what's in it for me, power headline people. That's how you market. Mm -hmm. So the point being, you service providers, in fact, tell you, you know what's super hot right now? Cryptocurrency. So why not teach a class? The seven basic uh investment mistakes newbie crypto uh currency investors constantly make and then in parentheses and how to avoid them exclamation point i promise you the men and women who want to know about cryptocurrency they're coming to that class yeah and i think this is so true because we often you know we were talking about this earlier off air is that there's so many times you know and we'll i'll talk specifically for service providers um, just cause we left them out for so long. Yes, yes, um, so, but they get so scared of, of giving stuff away. Cause they're like, I don't want to give this stuff away. Like this is my bread and butter, but that's one thing. Um, and I'm so glad you brought it up. Cause that's one thing I learned very early on in business is I would show people behind the curtain and say, you know, when I had what, my first company I ever opened, it was an accounting company. And I would oh, tell cool. all of my clients. I, I can show you how to do this. I will sit down with you. I will show you exactly how to enter. We'll get you all set up and ready to go. And I remember everybody going, that is stupid. And I go, no, <laughs> because here's what's going to happen. They are all going to weed themselves out yes. really, really quickly. Because the kidding. ones who come back to me are the ones that I know really value what I do now Absolutely. because they tried it and they went, this is bullshit. <laughs> and I don't want to do this anymore. This is dumb. And those, and, but when You're I first right. started my business, I didn't do that. And so I would kind of get these jerky clients that would be like, I don't think this is the way you did it. And you know, like, I read this book and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> sweet Lord, like you do realize I have a degree in this. Like, I'm glad you read a book and I'm glad you're educated, but no, you, you like, yes, you have rental properties. No, you can't write off a boat. I don't care what book you read. Like you can't have a property that you rent for $700 and then try to write off a hundred thousand dollar boat because you ain't <laughs> taking those tenants out on that boat. Like it's just wow. not going to happen, but, wow. but it, you know, the, the good thing and, and what I think people need to realize is where, where people, like you said, where people really come back to you is because now they know that you're the expert in that. That's right. Right. So right. they're going, I really want you to do this because I don't want to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're right. Not, and it's not my something else. The trust factor goes to the roof. In fact, let's not think about it. You go into the happy hour bar, they give you the hors d'oeuvre. That's what we're telling you to do. These free reports, these MP3s, these podcast episodes, these are your hors d'oeuvres. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say you log into Facebook right now. You don't go into Facebook, let me see what the, the latest ads are. No, that's just part like television. You, if you want to watch television free on tele, network television, they got to run advertisement. You understand that? Now, but here's the point. When someone tunes into a podcast or takes the next level, subscribes, they specific, I don't care what the niche is now, they specifically are tuning in because they have an interest. And you get between, 20 minutes to an hour to bond with that audience. You can't possibly do that with somebody scrolling an ad on Facebook. Now, of course you think, yeah, but Mark, they make a lot of, yes, they do. I mean, when you got billions of people and like Google pay per click, yeah, they're going to make money. But the point is you're not really building a relationship. This 
is bonding and building relationship. So yeah. when you show somebody the seven things I mean, as a realtor, seven ways to improve the uh, what do you call curb appeal of your house before you put it on market. That's your hors d'oeuvre, man. Yeah. Who wants that information? Somebody trying to sell a house or a commercial piece of property. When you tell them about the financing, the clauses to look for and all that, these are your hors d'oeuvres. But you're like she said, you're demonstrating your expertise. You're not giving away the farm. This, I, Tanya, I know. What's a, what's a major supermarket in your area? Um, I would probably say, well, like we have like Superstore. Superstore. And we have Walmarts here too. <laughs> okay, but I said, let's see you Superstore. I'm not familiar with them, but I guarantee you, they will have some attractive looking, supermodel looking young women standing at the end of aisles with a little shish kebab sample thing. It's either ice cream or this and that. Why are they doing that? Because they give you that little sample and you say, oh, what are, oh, head over to the meat department or head over to the gourmet ice cream section. Yeah, we have some right here if you'd like to cook it at home. Yeah, <laughs> right. Costco you gets me away. on that every time. <laughs> right, you didn't give away the farm. Yeah. You gave away enough sample. to wet their palate, a sample, and they'll want to go further. That just like this podcast episode. Either this sample is going to turn you on or it's going to turn you off. If it turns you on, you'll go say, well, who's this guy? Let me check this guy out a little bit more. That's the way this works. Yeah. So we're trying to get you into the modern world of marketing. And ladies and gentlemen, remember this. Marketing, promoting, and traditional advertising is psychology. Now, I'm not talking about manipulation. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you got to think about what is the reasoning behind what you're doing. And then that's how you know how to bait your hook. You know, if you're fishing for bass, you don't put chewing tobacco on the end of that hook. And, oh, boy, we're going to catch a bunch today. No, you're not. What does that bass like to eat? And that's what you put on that hook, man. Right. That's how you bait your audience. Most small business owners want to know how to get more done for less and increase profits. Well, word to the wise, that's what Tanya and I specialize in, okay? <laughs> that's what we're here to show you how to do. And there's so many ways you can do it, ladies and gentlemen. It will blow your mind. Tanya, if I can, let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, our time's getting short here. If you're a non, it, it, please hear this part. I hope this is the one part that doesn't get, it, it doesn't get uh, screwed up in the editing, Tanya. If you are a non-franchise, Retail appliance center, retail furniture concern, retail jewelry store. Please reach out to me. I've got some ways to show you how to blow your thing up for literally pennies on the dollar. In fact, if you're rocking local billboards, stop it and please reach out to me because I can show you a much better way to maximize your dollars. Tanya, do I have enough time to do a two minute, three minute uh, example? For the retail jewelers? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, love this. Let's say Tanya has her own uh, hair salon. She's been doing this six, seven, eight years. She's got clientele coming up to yin yang. She's got six stylists. And again, two doors down is Mark's retail jewelry store. So what I do is I send a couple of my female uh, managers, senior managers into to become customers. So, and I tell them, I show them who Tanya is. You make sure you get in her chip. So they come in, and this particular day, wouldn't you know it, they're rocking a pair of $2,500, a diamond-studded necklace, and $650 pair of diamond-studded earrings. So they sit in Tanya's chair, and you know, you know how, Tanya knows how to get rapport, but one of the things Tanya says is, wow, I really love your necklace and your earrings. And they say, well, thank you. You say, do you know uh, Mark's jeweler? Two dollars. And I say, oh, yeah, I've never been in there. But yeah, she said, well, that's who we work for. And I got to be totally honest with you, Tony. He sent us in here specifically to become a customer here. Like, oh, my goodness. Tell him I said, thank you. But he also has a question for you. She says, what's that? The magic question. The magic question. Is it okay if he periodically refers you to new business or customers? So he said, of course. He said, and by the same token, as long as it doesn't take away from anything you're currently doing, or we'll have one on in the future, are you okay with the same? So I said, sure. What do you have in mind? He said, well, she pulls out a picture and she says, take a look at these diamond studded earrings. They're 600 retail for $650 a pair. You go to a website, or you come to the store, you see it. I said, oh my God, they're beautiful. So said, how would you like to get those for 50% off? And if need be, Mark will give you terms, no interest, X amount of payments for six months till you pay them off. And Tanya goes, what? 
I'd love to do that. It's okay. I'll tell you what. She writes out on a business card because she didn't have any of her extremely time sensitive market tested uh, discount coupon cards, which she should have. She just takes a business card, puts a date on it. 10 days. She looks on her, her phone and says, 10 days out. Tanya, you come to the store before that date. You come by yourself. It's 10% off. It says, My, buy self, 10% off. Uh, drags a friend, 40% off. And she hands it to Tanya. You say, you, in other words, we want to ethically bribe you to bring somebody with you. You bring somebody with you, you get that pair of 650 diamond studded, uh, uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, those uh, earrings, earrings, which normally go for $650. You can get them for $325. And simply for joining our opt in email list, you can get a $300 bracelet for $99, provided you drag somebody with you who's at least 18. Tanya turns to her stylist and say, Are any of you ladies up for this? They all say yes. Now, here's the point. We're going to hook all of these ladies up with $650 diamond studded earrings that they're going to get this, get at cost, instead of paying for that $40,000 a month billboard, in case you wonder, at cost, plus if they join our email list and drag a friend, they get that $300 necklace or you know, bracelet. It's just like Tanya. It normally retails for $300 for $99. Now, here's the point going forward. What's going to happen when their clientele sit in the chair now? Where did you get those Bingo! <laughs> now, here's what we tell these ladies. We're going to start you off with a stack of 200 of these extremely time-sensitive, market-tested discount coupons, index cards. Here's what you do. If anybody, you know, and not just here, but, you know, when you're out and about, but let's just use a focus on the, the shop right now. Your clientele comes and sit in that chair. You get that comment about the earrings, and we know you will. You put a 10-day 10, a 10 window, you look on your, your, your uh, phone, go 10 days out, not 10 business days, ladies and gentlemen, 10 physical days, whatever that 10th day is, if it's a Sunday or whatever, a holiday, you still put it down. Here's the point. Side A tells them to enter our pre-drawing for their chance to win a $2,500 diamond studded necklace. Side B is come along, say 10% off up to $200. Or we might even lower it down to $100 because we want to make it a no-brainer that they drag somebody, the McDonald's right. technique. The point being, you say, ladies, as soon as you reach 10 customers, we'll pay you $50 a lead that converts. As soon as you reach 10, we double it to 100, $100 a lead. Now, that chair that they're renting might cost $500. I don't know. You do five of these, your chair is paid for, which means every person that sits in that chair to the end of the month is gross profit in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take this a step further. Every month, Whichever one of you, including Tanya, has the most customers per lead, we give you a $250 by check bonus. What? Again, this is in lieu of local primetime television radio, local primetime uh, television. Uh, right, because you're not paying radio. for that now. Right, exactly. Now, get the point. We say every time you lead for the month where you've already led, we double the $250 to a $500 bonus. In other words, ladies, we want you to compete. We want you to keep these cards with you when you're out and about. When you go to the, to the local, uh, uh, what do you call it? A bakery. And so I said, oh, my God, I love your earrings. Oh, you know what? Do you like to get hooked up? Yeah. You see the point? Now, get this. We tell now you Tanya, have, you essentially are now creating walking billboards and, for yourself. Oh, you are so still in my thunder, girl. But <laughs> you're absolutely right. That's my line. You've created one. You're telling me they're not going to jump on social media? Yeah. Why didn't short off their blank? Are you kidding me? Do you think they're besties? Girl, where did you get them, those rocks? Oh, let me tell you. I didn't tell you. I forgot to tell you to text you. But here's now. Get this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the next step of the thing. We tell Tanya every month that you send us 20 customers, X, meaning, you know, whatever the, the metrics work out to be. Every month you send us 20 customers, we're paying your commercial lease for the month. Hello? What? That means every customer that sits in the chair is profit. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you market a business. Okay? And if this doesn't make sense to you, I'm not your guy. It's pure and simple. It's yay or nay. There's no ambiguity here. There's no in between, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a lady friend of mine told me, she said, Mark, there's two truths in life. You're either pregnant or you're not. 
<laughs> okay, it's not I'm kind there's of no, pregnant. Yeah. Or, no. There's no in between. There's <laughs> no in between here. So either Mr. Marketing or what Jenny and I have shared with you makes sense or it doesn't. Okay? And I, listen, I'm okay if it doesn't make sense because nobody walking the planet, ladies and gentlemen, and you and I are no exception, is right for everybody. Yeah. I get that. And I'm okay with it. You should be okay with it too. But for those of you, this makes sense. And for you thinking, well, okay, I see how that would work for a service provider, Mark. How would I do? That's why you and I need to connect. The chat. See, I'm going to take you uh, the blinders off and show you what's right in front of you, just like the cactus. I want you to stop seeing cactus and see Las Vegas. Instead. Right? Because yeah. it's there. You just don't see it. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm no genius. I've just been fortunate enough to be exposed to the men and women that think like Tanya at another level because she shared some stuff you guys don't know about before we came on that was pretty mind boggling. I can just adapt. Like I said, they said seven plus three and I went, okay, I can't do seven plus three, but eight plus two makes sense. That's what we're talking about here. And you got more of this, ladies and gentlemen, than you know what to do with. I'm sad to tell you there's not a shortage of anything. In fact, did you hear the last Super Bowl, how much advertising they sold? Oh, gosh, I, can, I haven't heard it yet, saying, but I can imagine. From no, the right? I, yeah. And yet people run around here saying a recession. Yeah. Says who? <laughs> yeah. You know, if there's a recession, how can these companies afford to spend that kind of money on a one-and-done ad? Yeah. You go on and see, they, they want the prestige of saying – as seen on the Super Bowl. Forget that nonsense. For the type of money they're throwing away on that, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, one last story, Tiny, but this is this is this is cuts to the chase of what we're talking about. I saw this, I don't have HBO anymore, Tiny, but I used to. I saw this on HBO one time on a boxing match. It was the main event. This guy comes out, he takes off his his robe, and a major hotel paid him a quarter million dollars to stencil the name of their hotel on his back. Now, for that brief second, when the camera, you know, went on it, you're like, oh, wow, that may, okay, is like, I don't know, 10, 20 million people watching or more. It makes sense. If you tuned in by round five, guess what? You couldn't read it anymore because mm -hmm. he had been sweating. So all you thought was, what is that thing on this guy's back? Is he sick? What's with it? What did they get for that? I'd say that's a complete waste of money. Mm -hmm. If you got that kind of money to, to throw away, contact me, okay? I'm telling you, yeah, I'll take it. better yeah. use of that $250,000 or X. So my point is, forget this one and done stuff, man. It's outrageously expensive. Now, contrast this, what I just said with the, the jewelry and the, the uh, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can do this with a, uh, a nail salon that's three doors down simultaneously while you're doing it with the hair salon and have a competition. Whichever yeah. one does the most, the owner gets double. You see what I'm saying? So, but here's the point. I don't want to be like rest too far, but here's the point that I want to make with that. My major competitor just paid forty thousand dollars for that. I call it alligator billboard because it eats money. It's an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> that thing. And and, and, and Jen, you know this is true. You ask your husband, am, "Am I lying about this?" If there's a billboard somewhere in a city, and a guy is driving by in a car. Unless it's a hot babe in a bathing suit on a car, we did not notice it. No, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you notice that billboard? What billboard? That's true. I usually that, point it out. Right. Did you see that you sign that says, you just proved, a, it's yeah. It's me dressed and we're like, oh man, 5th and 40th. Did you know, oh, dude, I took a picture so hot. You but know? I bet you anything that the majority wouldn't be able to tell you what it was she was selling. Exactly. <laughs> You're absolutely spot on. You yeah. are so smart. What but the product is. is you won't even get their attention. Yeah. So why waste the money? I'm telling you this kind of like Tanya said, this localized sort of uh, 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 ethical bribery marketing. Man, just doesn't you work. You could do this to the cows come home. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you see that. I sincerely So if listeners are sitting out there right now and they're like, woof, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm getting this. I'm pregnant. I'm hearing it. I'm feeling it. Where so. is the best place for them to go? So, I mean, I want you to plug your social media too, but you have a blog and your podcast. So I want to make sure that I'm telling you, you got to plug wow. both of those too. So talk they, about them. You see how ethical and bribe works, ladies and gentlemen. You guys don't know I slid our money under the table for that. That was a brilliant uh, uh, lead in, Tanya. Thank you so much. But ladies and gentlemen, if you like to read, please head over to my blog, You 
Y-O-U, canmarketonlinenow.com. All one word. My brother always forgets the now and says, something's wrong with your website. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, did you put the now in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you can market online now.com. Unless my host has taken me down what I'm telling you. But you can also- You were on there when I looked. <laughs> yeah, right? Head over to spotify.com. The Marketing Minute, Mark Newsom, N-E-W-S-O-M-E, you see my little fancy logo I had done for some guy on fiber. And uh, pardon me, you can listen. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would, pick out any title that jumps out at you. Listen to my episode. And only if you think it's warranted, please give me a five-star rating because organically that helps Tanya and I get, get our message out there. Reach better. more people, yep. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. And that's why we try to give away these or d'oeuvres, these nuggets that hopefully will cause you to want more and to share more. Because, you know, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Online, it's all about domain authority and all this stuff. If I open my retail jewelry store tomorrow or my retail appliance center or my retail furniture concern tomorrow, and I, you know, realize, hey, I got a thousand dollars spread in this and I'll take a hundred dollars instead of the whole thousand and I hook up 70 nurses. Are you kidding me? Nobody mm -hmm. says, well, Tanya, those are beautiful earrings, but girl, how long has that company been in business? Nobody asks that yeah. question. They don't care. What they're thinking is, well, I better get there soon because these people may come to their senses and not and do it. Yeah. Doing this. That's the difference. And you and I could take advantage of that. And boy, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't even got started. There's so many ways. Like I said, if you only see six plus four, I failed you. But more importantly, you failed yourself. Because seven plus three, eight plus two, 40 divided by four, it'll all get you to the same place. To the place. same place. I you love know? that. In fact, yeah. tell you, do they have on there? On, in, in, have you ever noticed these shows? Uh, oh, they come on late night cable where these guru and gurus are telling you how you can buy real estate no, with no money. Yeah. Right? No, she's wrong. You, know, you see her rolling eyes. I, I said that to say this. Notice a, a peculiarity about this, tell you. You can buy millions of dollars with the real estate with no money. But what do they want for the information? Your soul. No, no I mean, <laughs> they want money. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, well, how come I can buy all this property with no money, but I can't get your course no money down? Yeah. You see the point, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah. what I'm trying to get you to understand is there's all kind of nuances. And ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a quick aside here because you probably don't understand this. This is very important. If you bought a house, invested in, no, let's use an apartment. You invested in a, a two-family duplex for a quarter million dollars. Now, maybe in your area, it's not possible nope. anymore. I don't yep. know. But here's the point. And you turned around and sold it for $250,000. Most of you would say, well, that's a net net. How can you make money? Well, it depends. What if I bought it from Tanya for $250,000 at 6.5% and I sell it to somebody whose credit isn't great so they can't go to the bank, so I charge them 11% on that quarter million dollars? Do you not see how I'm making that spread? Making extra money, yeah. Right? Yeah. But the price is the same. This is marketing. Yeah. This is You're the looking same at the sort numbers. of dynamics. It's all over the place. Yeah. So the point is, or, or, or here's another example. Tanya has a bank. I go in, I deposit my money. She says, Mark, we're going to pay you a whopping one and a half percent. I'm like, okay. I, I got a CD, certificate of deposit. Tanya turns around and loans my $100,000 to somebody who wants to invest in real estate, and she charges them 11%. Do you not see how she's leveraging my money? She didn't charge more money. I mean, she's loaning out the same 100000 but she's yeah. getting 11%, and she only has to pay me one and a half. One and a half, yeah. Here's what you people don't see. If the NBA can pay LeBron James $20 million a season to dribble a basketball, what do you think those owners are making? Yeah. You see, it's the same <laughs> dynamic. It's yeah. just bigger zeros. It's the same concept. They couldn't pay it if they weren't making the money. Yeah. And, and that's where simply. and that's where learning how to use this is, is where you can leverage it for yourself. Right. So that you become that that higher exactly. everyone. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, you're sitting on assets and resources. In fact, I this is it. One last pure example, because I got to share this with you because you don't see this. 
let's say Tanya owns a uh, uh, corner store, a little deli, and you know, you come in and buy these overpriced products, you know, because she's got to bump way up, you know, to try to make her a markup. But it's what she does. One day, a lady comes in who runs a, a retail appliance center. She's a single location, not franchise. And her time you've gotten to know each other and they speak with kids and, you know, the family and I was a vacation and, oh, check out my pictures. They said, well, look at my picture. You know, <laughs> they know each other. So they come in and they have a nice conversation. And she asked Tanya the magic question and Tanya's like, yes, you know, I, mean, I could periodically return to favor. She says, here, first of all, she says, here's a card, <clears throat> an index uh, a discounted coupon card. I want you to come in. You can buy up to $2,000. As long as you join my list, you can buy up to $2,000 worth of goods at my closeout sale price. So I was like, what? Okay, that's cool. And he says, now here's what I want you to start doing. Whenever people spend over $10, you have a sign up and say, get your free gift card for every purchase over $10, one per customer. So the point is they spend over $10. Well, what is this ethical bribe? They get, Tanya goes on, the, she pulls a card out, puts a 10 day date out. And she says, here's the deal. Bring this card to that place. Uh, you come before that date. You come by yourself, you save 10% off up to $100. You drag a friend, it's 40% off up to $1,500. Your friend joins the list as well before they leave the store. They say 30% uh, off up to $1,000. You know, in other words, that's the template. Now, here's the point. She tells Tanya, every time one of those converts, I'll start you out at $50. The moment you bring me 20, you bump to 150. Well, 10 of those, $1,500, what's your lease? And it says $1,300. You just made $200. Follow? Yep. yep. Now, the point is she's leveraging her customers who probably would never spend $1,000 with her in her store. I mean, over time they might. But the point is they're going to go out there and spend that money anyway. Right. Why so shouldn't Tanya leverage them? and give them a deal for going to this place. What do they care that Tanya has a relationship with that retail appliance center when she's getting them a deal? A deal, yeah. So if you don't see that, I failed you. Tanya and I failed you. <laughs> we really have. If you do see it, and I hope you're excited by it, drop by my place, my blog, please. Fill out the contact page. Let's jump on Zoom, do a 15 minute, non-pressure, I don't try to put you in a half Nelson <laughs> discovery session. Listen to my podcast. If you, ladies and gentlemen, you listen to three of my podcast episodes and you don't get at least five new ideas, I'm absolutely not your guy, guaranteed. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure that we have all of the links to where people can can find you on our blog post. Right. Um, and, uh, and thank you again so much for, you know, for coming on the show, for sharing everything. I know that there was a lot for people to take on this and no, we're gonna, all mine. we also have um, a giveaway that you're giving your nine page special report. Oh goodness. I so forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go, thank you, Tanya. I owe you another ethical bribe. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, when you go to my blog, there is a free nine page special report. And what it's talking about, just give you a little heads up, is this whole concept of back end marketing that we're talking about. But along with that, I also have a 22 part a uh, follow-up sequential email marketing series called the Small Business Marketing Mastery Series. But here's what I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. Tanya, thank you so much again for bringing no that up because I completely forgot. You know, I get on these tangents and I forget. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> that, right? Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to download that free nine-page special report. I want you to start going through those sequential email messages. And if for any reason along the line you decide, Mark, this is great, but it's just not for me. Please feel free to unsubscribe for any reason you want, anytime you wish, and you and I can still be friends. Guaranteed. Absolutely. Perfect. Positively. No hard feelings. And we'll make sure that we have the link so that people can just do a quick click to be able to connect that as well. Mark, thank you so much. Thanks. It has been just an absolute pleasure to chat with you as much as we did off air the and pleasure's now all mine, on yeah. air. <laughs> all mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got value. We tried to bring it. We tried to Snoop Dogg said we tried to drop it like it's hot. <laughs> and I'm not a hip hopper, just so you know, but that just seems to fit. That's a great way to end. Thanks again, Mark. Okay, my pleasure. I had so much fun sitting and chatting with Mark and both on air and off air. I think we talked more off air than we did on. 
um, which is always fun for me with a guest. It's one of the biggest reasons why I do this podcast. I would love to say that I do it 100% for all of you that are listening, but the truth is there are some days where I feel like I get more out of it. As Mark said, you know, if you are listening to all of these episodes, just taking a moment of your time to head wherever you listen and give us a rating. Um, Even leaving us a written review really helps us to reach more people. And I absolutely love reading them. So please keep those coming in. And if you have a topic that you want to know about, or even if you're like, I think I want to try to be on a podcast, I want you to reach out to me. And the reason I'm saying this is because there's some times where I find people say, you know, I'd like to be on a podcast, but I I just, I don't feel like I'm big enough yet to be on it. And that's just not the truth. Everybody has a story that can help somebody and you're never going to be able to help them unless you get it out. So head over to our website. You will be able to see where you can apply to be on the show. Just fill out a questionnaire and our team will get in contact with you because I love hearing from you guys. Not only are you guys listening, but I love to be able to listen to you guys as well. So no matter what it is you're doing today, whether you're revamping your marketing, whether you're signing up for a mastermind, or whether you just found a new blog in Mark, make sure that you take time to have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?